This video has been a long time in the making, something approaching probably a year at this point. This is a Dell Precision M6400 laptop which was purchased to replace uh, an increasingly aging and infirmed Dell Inspiron N7110 uh, 17-inch laptop computer, uh, which was from the Windows 7 days, if I'm not mistaken, but definitely these days it's starting to get a bit long in the tooth. Around this time last year, a replacement was sourced in the way of this Dell Precision uh, M6400 laptop computer, and it's been sitting in its box uh, that it was shipped in for the past year, kind of put on the back burner after Google Chrome had announced that they were going to extend Windows 7 support for another year until 2022, and they've now, I think, extended that yet again to 2023 now, but it's high time that I finally make the switch. It does come with a genuine Dell battery, which a nice little benefit of that is the, the battery indicator that is integrated into it. And uh, I think it's in sleep mode right now, so I'm not going to remove that battery. I don't feel like having to reboot the computer. Now this computer, like pretty much all of Dell's other business class offerings of the time, does have a dock connector. Coming over to the side of the computer, in this case it's actually, the this is the right side of the computer, there's an express card slot, a, wi a physical Wi-Fi switch, which is really a nice feature you don't see on any computers today. And there's also your WPS button for connecting to... WPS enabled wireless networks, uh, Gigabit, uh, Broadcom, uh, Ethernet, a DisplayPort connection, which I don't have a need for. I don't even have any devices that are capable of that. VGA, a USB port. I don't believe this computer has USB 3.0. I'm pretty sure that the little plus sign and the lightning bolt indicates that it offers charging. Uh, there's a name that Dell calls it. There's also an eSATA connection here. I don't have any devices that use that, but again, it's good to have. On the back of the computer, there's two vents, again because there are two fans on this machine. Your power connection is a little offset of center on the back. And this is what I'd refer to as the driver's side, the left side of the computer. There's a full-sized 6-pin Firewire 1394 connection. Uh, you've got your typical Kensington lock that, I, that nobody ever uses unless you're in a business environment. Uh, standard three and a half millimeter microphone and headphone jack and unlike most computers today these are separate jacks it's not an integrated microphone and headset jack which i really dislike two more usb ports and you've got two leds that indicate your battery and your power status sd card slot a pc card smart card slot and then a slot loading optical drive which is something that you don't really see on Windows PCs of this time frame. This computer has a very nice brushed metal finish on its exterior. And unlike lots of the other modern computers, uh, laptops, this is not a chiclet keyboard, thankfully. And you do have your touch point or track point, as uh, Lenovo calls it. There's some indicator lights here for your hard drive, your battery, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and your wireless WAN. Uh, WAN, I guess is what it's commonly referred to. Just a cellular connection. Caps lock, num lock, and scroll lock. Your speakers are up here as opposed to the left and right sides of the keyboard. And you've also got a fingerprint reader here because, again, this was a business-oriented PC. You do have a dedicated number pad here with dedicated calculator and volume buttons. I really like that in addition to having the traditional uh, hotkeys like for your brightness and your Dell control point application and your battery charging enable and disable. When I say that this computer fought me every step of the way, kicking and streaming, installing all the drivers, that would be a major understatement. It definitely took me the better part of today getting everything squared away and running properly. This is the Core 2 Quad Q9100 at 2.26 gigahertz, a whopping 16 gigabytes of RAM. Something that it definitely could have needed back in its Vista days. I'm sure it didn't come with that originally, but was upgraded later on in its life. Currently running Windows 10 Professional, uh, version 2.1.h2. As of the recording of this video, January 24th, 2022. And a couple things that were rather irritating upon initial installation of Windows 10 was the incessant desire for Windows to search the web from the start bar, or the taskbar rather. 
uh, even though I think they call it start menu in the group policy, even though this is technically the taskbar. And I really couldn't stand how it wanted to constantly send my search results to Bing and then load the results and recommend that I search the web and click a little button. I didn't like that behavior at all. Uh, I also disabled the lock screen. I think that's a bit redundant having to uh, press the enter key or swipe up um, in this case because this isn't a touch screen using your, your, your touchpad. Um, just to be able to log in. So I disabled that. Also went ahead and disabled all the live tiles and pin tiles on the start menu. I'm sure maybe down the road I'll get used to that and start using that. But um, I wanted more of a conventional start menu here. So I just unpinned all of them and now I just have a list of my programs. But uh, primarily the reason I'm recording this video is to preserve this for posterity. And also to serve as a sort of visual archive of what I had to do to get this computer to run. As I'm actually considering getting one of these for myself because it's a really nice having a computer like this that could serve as a desktop replacement uh, that you could really upgrade to like 16 gigabytes of RAM or even more than that. One of the upgrades that I'm considering making to this machine in the future is to get an SSD. It is reasonably fast, but Windows 10 definitely is helped a lot by running an SSD. And one thing I haven't shown yet was the backlit keyboard that this computer has. I really wish that my Dell Latitude had this. Now, when it came to getting Bluetooth to run on this computer, let me tell you, that was a chore in and of itself that took the better part of probably 30 to 45 minutes of experimenting with various drivers. And, of course, the Bluetooth drivers that Dell provides for this machine only go up to, I think, Windows 7, and they would not run. Um, in fact, the first time around when I tried kind of shoehorning them into the Windows 10 installation, while I can't entirely blame it, on the Bluetooth drivers that I tried running right from Dell's website for this machine because again they're not made for Windows 10 but suffice it to say that when I did try to run them something went bottoms up with the installation of Windows and once I restarted it told me that it, it, I just kept getting an error code that it couldn't a stop error uh, with a QR code and it just said critical stop error and startup repair wasn't able to fix it and I was pretty much screwed so Needless to say, I didn't do that the second time around after having to then reinstall Windows 7 and then subsequently upgrade to Windows 10. I did some Googling and thankfully a couple people had the same issue. I actually came across this Dell support website which uh, a couple people went back and forth discussing how to get this to work and then somebody discovered that uh, there's actually a Lenovo driver that works with the Broadcom 370 Bluetooth uh, mini card module and uh, it's made for Windows 10. I downloaded this, installed this and now I can use Bluetooth as intended on this machine just by going to the Action Center and I never thought that it's simple, something as simple as a touchpad and track point would put up so much of a fight when it came to working cohesively with Windows and of course the newest version of the driver is from 2009 give or take I think there's a couple revisions and variations on the uh, Dell support website for this computer um, but they all top out I think at 2000 around October of 09 and uh, while they did install correctly for whatever reason they wouldn't allow me to access the settings I tried every variation of the driver that they offered for this computer it didn't work no matter how many times you click it, you'd see the loading, the loading pinwheel icon. And I don't know, I guess it was something with the software not being compatible with Windows 7. Uh, excuse me, Windows 10 with it being so old. But I ended up being able to find a similar driver for the, I believe, slightly newer Dell Precision M6500. You can see there's a Dell Jog Shuttle touchpad driver. This one's from 2010. This is what I installed, and after installing it, I can now access my touchpad settings. Now you might be asking yourself, what's the big deal about being able to bring up this program? Well, apparently once you install the driver, drag lock is enabled by default. I don't like that behavior, it's just annoying to me, so I had to disable it and that's why I had to fix the touchpad. Speakers sound decently reasonable for what they are. These are laptop speakers after all, so definitely nothing to write home about. Now, I don't know what Dell was thinking, but they really made a major misstep when they put the 1397 wireless card in this computer. It is so damn slow. All right, well, that isn't as bad as it was running at when I first started. Gotta love obnoxious ads plastered all over the place because you don't have an ad blocker. 
So it definitely wasn't easy, but as you can see by the built-in device manager, all the drivers are installed and operating correctly. The only thing I haven't been able to figure out is why the touchpad scrolling does not apply to things like the Windows 10 start menu and Windows 10 apps. Uh, for example, like on my Latitude E6500 with Windows 10, which was never designed for Windows 10, nor were the drivers that it's running, I can simply scroll on the right side of the touchpad like I would with any other application, and it'll scroll through the, the, the start menu, but on this computer it sits there and does nothing. So I don't know if it's a driver incompatibility. I can't figure it out, so if anybody happens to have any clue what's causing that, definitely chime in in the comments. I'd love to know. But I still can't complain, considering that uh, this computer was really cobbled together. Uh, at least all the drivers were. Like even the SD card reader, which mysteriously stopped working on my Latitude E6500 uh, within the past week. You can see it pops right up on autoplay, and we can choose what we want to do with it. And with Dell Control Point installed in compatibility mode, I think for Windows Vista, uh, the hotkeys do work, like for enabling and disabling battery charging. Um, see, it just disabled it up here. And if I click this key, it enables it again. And if I close that out, that should open up the Control Point application. And I went ahead and installed all the other programs just so there's no issues, um, like the smart card driver and utility program. So if I wanted to, I could use any of these programs. I'm probably never going to, but it's just nice to have everything configured as it would have come from the factory back when this computer came with Windows Vista. And there's the specs for anybody who is truly interested in the nitty gritty of this computer. The graphics uh, are NVIDIA Quattro FX2700M. And again, Dell only had drivers, I think, from 2012 or 2011. But uh, NVIDIA does have new Windows 10 drivers for this graphics card, which I was able to download and install. Well, this was definitely a good purchase because looking at computer prices today, is this guy on eBay selling four of them for 250 bucks? It is a quad core, Q9300, 2.53 gigahertz, uh, but only 8 gigabytes of RAM. And I think I bought this computer for around uh actually less than half that so i know this probably wasn't the video that most people were looking for um i'm sure a lot of people were probably hoping this was going to be a detailed breakdown of how to run windows 10 on here but to tell you the truth i'm not even going to attempt to do that because it was just such a hodgepodge cobbled together mess of tr just trying this and trying that uninstalling and reinstalling drivers that if i even tried to document it it would just be um, a disaster of a video that's all over the place that nobody in their right mind would be able to follow along with at home. So I do wish everybody the best that tries to tackle this endeavor on their own. But uh, definitely I wish you good luck because you're going to need it. It was definitely an arduous ordeal to say the least. But definitely well worth the effort. And so now with that being said, it's time to put this computer to rest for just a bit longer. Until it gets handed over to its new owner, 